How's it going everyone? I'm Matt Davis, founder and owner of Final Rise. And in this video, I wanted to do a deep dive on our Final Rise Summit Vest. If you guys are familiar with our brand, you're probably aware we do have multiple vest designs. We have our Summit, we have our Legacy, and we have our Sidekick. One of the hard things about product pages or websites is it kind of limits us in a way about how much we can share with you guys. It's hard to really take a lot of the design concepts and some of the more detailed things that we would like to share with you and put those on a website. You know, I mean, our, our landing pages are fairly robust. There's a lot of great information on there, but nothing beats a really good visual and being able to utilize long form communication like a video is a great educational tool. So that's really what we want this video to be about. We want to be able to educate you on the Final Rise Summit Vest, show you the ins and outs, speak to the design concepts. And if you're trying to decide between this vest and one of our others, hopefully we're gonna be able to point you in the right direction and answer some of the questions you might have. Jumping right into her. First I'll address that um, the shoulder harnesses and the waist belts are the very same across every single vest that we offer. And they're really two keystones in what separate our products from anything else on the market. Um, starting with the shoulder harness specifically, you can see on it's, it's a very thin, non-padded harness. There's no padding on the back and there's no padding on the inside. We use a nice um, no-slip PVC type material right here. Kind of has a textured surface to it, so it's gonna grip really nice to your jacket or whatever layer you might be wearing. Um, and you're probably, or maybe you're wondering why we do not use shoulder um, padding or padding in the shoulder harness. The, the biggest reason is that it impedes natural gun mount, right? If I go out and I'm training all summer, I'm going to the range, I'm putting in the time, I'm spending a lot of money on shells and range fees and whatever. And then I go into the field and I go to shoulder my gun on the first rise of the season and I'm getting caught up on, you know, a lip from a padded harness or I'm mounting the gun, but there's maybe a buckle somewhere or that thickness is changing the overall length of pull. And that's really, really frustrating. And we wanted to design our gear so that it really functions seamlessly with you as you're working and shooting in the field. Gear should be complementary to and not prohibit the natural movement and the, uh, the instinctiveness of what we're doing, you know, wing shooting, shoulder and shock and all that. It's, it is the, I guess, culmination or it is the ability to just repeat and be instinctive and do something that you've practiced thousands and thousands of times. And having a padded shoulder harness, in my opinion, changes that, alters that. And they don't breathe. So that, that's another reason as well. And ultimately, in my mind, a padded shoulder harness is trying to band-aid or mask a poorly designed waist belt. Because when you really think about it, a strap vest and its entire design is trying to minimize the amount of material and weight that's up on your shoulders. A strap vest is essentially a glorified fanny pack and the shoulder harness is really just giving structure to this game bag and helping balance it front to back. So. No padding in the shoulder harness. We don't need it. We'll talk about the belt in a second, but to cross this off our checklist and tell you about it, we'll just keep diving down. On both sides of the shoulder harness, there are two horizontal webbing accessory locations. Um, the Summit Vest is bladder compatible. There's a sleeve on the back here. You can feed that tube up through here. You can route it through the webbing on the back. You can run it down the shoulder harness here, feed it through. And depending on the length of your hose, you may reach this bottom one or you might not. Being able to route it this way, I don't have to use a clip. Um, it stays in place. Again, the, the less I can have on my vest, especially my shoulder harness, the happier I am. Um, if you want to use a carabiner or a tether, you know, when it comes to handhelds, it's really a can of worms and everybody has their way that they like to, to use them. And so our goal was to provide a platform that gives you options and accommodates all those different design 
or excuse me, all those different ideas that people have or the way that they like to carry them. So we do have multiple accessories for handhelds and cell phones that will attach to this webbing. Um, there's a double stitched reinforced piece right here on the very bottom of the shoulder harness. That's great for a carabiner. For those of you that like to hang it down antenna and be able to flip it up and look at it, um, you do have that option. So, and then we've got our sternum slides on the front. You've got about an inch and a half of adjustment up and down, and that's really gonna help you fine tune and keep that sternum strap as low as possible. Again, coming back to mounting the gun, that's keeping that hardware as low um, in a way and keeping that shoulder pocket as open as possible. So as you're shouldering the gun, the only thing that's getting there is the gun itself. If it does catch on the shoulder harness because there's no padding and it's so thin and it conforms to the shape of your body, it's not gonna change anything. So really, we built this as a, a foolproof design when it comes to the shoulder harness. Um, on the back, we have the ability to adjust the yoke. That is to basically set it to your torso length. We use metal bar sliders on the back here. We do not use ladder locks. Ladder locks are this little plastic piece right here. Very easy to adjust, and in my opinion, they're appropriate for the front of a shoulder harness where you may need to adjust that on and off throughout the day it's readily accessible. You can just grab it, pull it down, and it's good to go. The reason that we don't use it on the back is for that exact reason, because if I go to pull my vest out of the back of my truck, I've got a deck system, and I grab it and I pull it up. Well, if I've got those ladder locks, it's very easy. I mean, I can just simply just pull up on that tab, and it adjusts. I'm not really giving it very much. And that's very frustrating to me with previous vests that I've owned when there's ladder locks in the back here, and they move and adjust. Um, so again, that's why we use these, these metal bar sliders on the back. They bite really hard into this webbing. Um, your torso length isn't going to change. I'm as tall as I'm ever going to be, unless for some reason at the ripe age of 31, I hit a growth spurt, probably not going to happen. And so having that adjustability in my mind just didn't really make sense. I don't, I don't need that on the back. I just wanna set it and forget it. If I'm layering throughout the year, you know, going from September into November, December, all the way through February, where we can hunt here in Utah. Most of the time, if I'm throwing on jackets or different things like that, I can get away with the adjustment on the front here. And so again, this is really set up to be very, very foolproof. Set it, forget it, go hunt. That's why you wanna own good gear. You wanna go hunt, you wanna have a good experience. Moving on to the waist belt itself again, because the shoulder harness and the waist belt are very complementary one to another. And like I said, these are two very key components to the final rise system. And the reason that we use them universally across all of our vest designs is because of how well they work together. If you hop down to the waist belt, this is kind of always awkward to hold and show. You'll see we don't have a single width waist belt. We do use padding in it, but this is more of a bat wing shape. This is going to really cover that entire area right here on your hips. We all kind of have a little, little bit of a, a dip right here in between my bones, and that's going to allow that to really suck in there really nice. It's going to basically concave, if you will, right, because it's going to be able to give, and it makes it harder to fall down on my hips while it actually can't fall. <laughs> It, they cinch down very, very tight. You can you can make it uncomfortable if you wanted to with how tight you can get it. Um, but that's a good thing. You wanna be able to adjust that appropriately. And then also on the inside, you'll see here, all the Final Rise vests, doesn't matter what model it is, we use a integrated padded lumbar pad. And this is an absolute game changer. If you're familiar with high-end hunting packs, um, mountaineering and, and basically packs that are designed to carry a bit of weight a lumbar pad is the key part of that of that backpack and what that lumbar pad is doing if i'm to stand up really straight there's kind of this sway right right here in my back there's this void well if i can fill that void as i cinch down the waist belt it makes it impossible for the vest to slide down my butt if there's nothing there there's a gap, right? And that's putting, basically allowing the belt to slip off of my hips. So again, being able to use that lumbar pad and that bat wing shape, it allows us to get away with the very, very minimal shoulder harness. 
Like I said, the shoulder harness is really nothing more than maybe a place to put your handheld and it gives structure to the game bag. But the 90% of the weight should be on the waist belt itself. Coming to the game bag real quick, <clears throat> you'll see here we've got some bungee on the back here. You know, a lot of the places that we're hunting in the West, we find shed antlers, um, deadheads, different things like that. Um, it's great for a light jacket. If you're hunting early season, there's maybe a little bit of rain, whatever's going on. This is a great place to keep that. It's secure, it's out of the way. This isn't gonna get caught on brush. We've, we've <clears throat> put thousands of these things into the market from the grouse woods to you know the deserts, no issues. Um, on the outside of the game bag, you'll see that there is molly webbing, both on the sides of the game bags as on the rear. We have quite the assortment of additional accessories that are compatible with this. Now this is standard molly, <coughs> excuse me, been talking a lot. Standard molly platform. So about an inch and a half between each bar tack, height and width. So if you have other molly pockets or things that you already own, lots of first aid kits, different things like that, you're able to slap that on here. Um, and it just, it really the goal with this vest design was to provide a platform and a foundation for people to go out and customize and refine this setup to fit their hunting style. A lot of times on vests, what you see is what you get. Um, it's very popular to have a large pocket right here. In my mind, that's the last place that I want a big pocket because a big pocket means I'm putting lots of little things or big heavy things in there. And the further away from my back and the further away from my shoulder harness that I'm putting weight, the more pressure it's going to put on that harness. So we've moved, we've built in a, a zippered pocket right here in this rear triangle. Great size right here. That's gonna be able to fit. I put lunch, first aid, and a lead, a short lead in here if we get into porcupines or skunks or whatever, and I need to put a lead on my dog. I've got a little short nylon cord that I carry with me. It's great to have that there. And then on either side of the game vest itself, there is, this is kind of hard to show, there is a zippered pocket on both sides of the game bag. Hopefully you can see that. And that is the exact same size. Oh, it's like holding on to a fish. <laughs> that is the exact same size as what you see here. So the Summit's going to come with three zippered pockets already built into it. I'm really big on organization and having a spot for certain things. Um, so by building this vest out to already include a lot of that and putting it in the appropriate locations so that no matter how you load it, it's really foolproof. It's really hard to make this vest uncomfortable because of how we've designed it. So like I said, I can put lunch, a lead, a first aid kit here, um, and then on the sides, I've got additional snacks. I can, you know, if I have another first aid kit or, or whatever, I've got a lot of storage. These are big pockets. And then if what the game bag has to offer is not enough, we offer additional side pouches that will sit on the side of the game bag. And it's really nice. They aren't going to sit. We'll show you in another video those pouches specifically but they aren't going to sit any wider than the vest itself. So even when those are on here, they're not wider than the water bottle, so you're not increasing your width. So if you're hunting thick cover and you're wanting to push through that, it's not gonna be something else that's gonna get snagged on. And then on the back, um, we do have a large pocket that sits here, um, covers essentially basically the whole back of this. And it's, a, it's, it's another way to be able to add additional carrying capacity. A nice thing about these Summit vests we offer them in multiple color layouts. This is our khaki brown. We have a khaki orange. We have a ranger green brown, a ranger green orange, um, multi-cam and potentially new colors in the future. But a lot of guys in some of the Western states, we are not required to have a, a certain um, amount of visible orange or blaze orange on us to, to legally hunt. It's, it's always a good idea. I like to wear an orange hat at least um, most of the time when I'm hunting. But if you, you know, you invest in a really nice piece of gear because some guys are believers that certain birds, you know, 
prairie chickens or sharp tails or different things like that can see orange and avoid that and they don't want to have any orange on their vest but then you go hunt a state that you do need to have it there's lots of guys that don't want to wear an orange hoodie or an orange shirt or an orange hat and so we've set this up to where there's a modular panel that attaches to these two outermost um, pieces there and covers the back of this vest right here it's the same shape as this this rear panel and it converts it to essentially an orange vest so you, with that orange panel, you could put an orange accessory rear pocket there, orange side pockets there, and an orange hat, and you're going to meet probably 90% of most states' um, legal, legal minimum. So again, lots of versatility. The, the Summit really is this game bag, and the vest itself is set up to be compatible with every single offering that we have every single accessory you can convert this into a running gun turkey rig you can move these pouches off and you can attach different pouches we've got box calls we've got turkey seats there's just a ton of versatility that we've built into the into the final ride summit and really what we're hoping to do and we hope the way that you guys see this is that we're adding value um, into into what you're doing when you when you invest in a really good piece of gear it's nice to be able to use it for multiple things. So from upland hunting and being able to go hunt multiple states, if you need to turn your you know, earth tone color into blaze, you don't have to go buy a whole brand new vest. You can spend a little bit of money on some additional accessories and bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, you're good to go, right? And you can continue using that piece of gear that you love and that you invested in. And then come turkey season or hiking or recreating, I wore this when I was archery uh, antelope hunting earlier uh, this past year. I was able to kill a great big buck. It was awesome. And I just, you know, stock after stock after stock. I didn't need my frame pack. If I was able to be successful, I could run back to the truck and, you know, take care of the animal. So, I mean, yes, it's designed specifically for upland hunting, but there's a lot, there's a lot of thought that went into this. My, my background and a lot of these design concepts stem from big game hunting and backpacking. I spend a couple weeks every single year living out of my backpack. And so bringing a lot of those ideologies and those design features that you find in these nice hunting packs and, and, and backpacking packs and bringing that to the upland space, it just made sense. Um, there, there, was, there was so much that could be improved upon and that was really our goal was to raise the standard of upland gear and focus on turning this stuff into very functional, high performing, comfortable pieces of upland gear. And that's really what we what we feel we've accomplished with the Final Rise Summit and the rest of our vests. So this vest is also bladder compatible. Um, if you'll see right here, there's a nice simple clip. And on the inside of the vest itself, this is gonna be hard to show, there is a, a pouch that runs on the inside here. We've bar tacked that on either side. That allows you to slip the bottom of a water bladder in there. We did not build a pocket that comes up on the mesh. One of the things that I, or one of the reasons I don't like that is if I don't need a bladder, I want my back to breathe, right? So in the case I need a bladder, that's great. Being able to hold that bottom third of a two liter bladder works wonderful. It gives it the lateral stability. It's clipped into the top. It's not going to swing. It's not going to go anywhere, but I also don't have some non-permeable or non-breathable fabric that's always covering my back. If you're like me, you maybe sweat a little bit when you're hunting and a sweaty butt crack is not enjoyable. So we've tried to mitigate that and, and being able to breathe across your back that provides better ventilation to the birds. It's just a better overall experience. So that would cover the game bag. We got three zippered pouches. We've got the molly webbing on the outside, bladder compatible, bungee, works with every single accessory that we offer. Very, very simple and streamlined shoulder harness that's not padded, um, waist belt, bat wing shape. We've got the lumbar pad built into there. Real quick, let's touch on the shell pouches. These are different from the Summit shell pouch. We call this our three stage shell pouch. And the three stages are, the first would be that it is, has a full zipper closure across the very top of this pocket. And this is a little hard to do holding it like this. But being able to zip things closed is very, very nice. I'm really big on utilizing 
pouches for more than just shells. I'm not always carrying a ton of shells, but if I'm carrying a nice camera or I'm carrying my wallet or different things that I maybe want to be able to have access to or have right there, being able to zip that close so it's not open-ended is a very, very nice feature. So that'd be the first stage. Um, second stage, if you have this open, you can see here we have a bar of Velcro here and we've got the mail tab on the side here. So it's able to simply just cover that. So if you're out hunting, you're pushing brush, you maybe need to get into that pocket, but you don't want debris or different things falling in there. Great, you're moving along, pull that up. I can reach in, grab, cover it, and I'm good to go. Third stage is simply just full access. That lid's gonna tuck seamlessly down inside of there, and you're able to just reach in, grab what you need, and it's very, very, very simple to use. It's a nice wide shell pocket, so if you're using gloves or you have big hands, you're not going to be fighting to get into the shell pouch itself. Um, that makes it extremely nice and user friendly. On the front of this, there's another zipper pocket. This is separate from the main pouch itself. And we designed this to be deep enough to hold a lot of the larger phones. I have an iMac or iPhone 13 Pro Max. God, there's so many different names. It's a big phone and it fits in here great. I can zip that closed. And it's also nice to be able to use this as a pouch for your handheld. You'll notice on the front of the waist belt, there are two sewn in D rings. I personally tether my handheld, my alpha to the end of here. And then I just set it in this pouch. I just leave that zipper open. So if I need to reach in, grab, look at it, great, drop it back in, it's not going anywhere. And then I can keep it out of whatever else I have going on in here. Um, Lots of different guys also like to carry different shot sizes. So you can have, you know, maybe seven and a halfs or sixes in one. And if you need some fives, you can throw them in the other. You know, you can kind of balance that and set that up to function for whatever your personal needs or desires are. So that would be the shell pockets. You will see that we have these water bottle holders that are on, on the waist belt as well. People, I know this is gonna sound really silly, but people love these water bottle holders. We reinforce the top of them and you know a couple of uses and they are so easy to load. They're easy to grab, it's easy access. You can grab the water bottle, take a drink, water your dog, and you put it back in. It's, uh, it's very seamless. I'll, hopefully I can show you here. These are brand new water bottles, so they might have a little bit of stick on them, but get a little dirt on them another time, time or two in the field and you'll be good to go. So like I said, I'm able to stand here, they're back far enough. You can drop them down on the waist belt um, if, if you would prefer that, if where the waist belt ends up sitting for you, it has those too close to your elbows. For me, they're perfect. Um, but like I said, if I need to get water, it's just easy and easy out. And like I said, a couple uses, get a little dirt on it, they slick right up, you can just drop them. It's a no look type thing, so anyways, Everything's set up here. We've got these nice deep pouches. I touch on this in, I guess, really any video of why we use these deep pouches. Um, one of the advantages that you have is it's very easy to access into the bottom of these. Um, it's a little bit harder for me to grab something if it's right here, but if I'm able to drop my hand and it's just like I'm getting something out of the bottom of my, um, out of my pants pocket. Uh, the analogy I use, you know, you might have your keys here it's easy to grab your keys, but if you have your cell phone here and you're trying to grab it at the top, sometimes it's harder to get it out. And so in my opinion, a deeper pouch is going to just work more naturally for you. It's more comfortable to grab and use. Um, it's nice if you're climbing over fences, you're climbing deadfall, you bend over, you fall, whatever, it happens. Those deep pockets are gonna keep all your stuff in there. You're not gonna yard sell and spill everything that you have on the ground there. Um, another key point with that, I always talk about these vests um, and use the analogy of them being a teeter-totter, right? The front of the vest and the back of the vest are, are going to naturally pivot with, you know, whatever weight you're going to put in there. So when I'm leaving the truck, I'm trying to put as much weight onto my waist belt as possible. I've got shells in here, you know, a handful of those. 
I've got snacks, full size camera, you know, maybe a leather band or something like that. You know, if I need something right here, need to help my dog or I need to reload or I want to take a picture, anything that I really just want access to, I want it right here. I can obviously access the whole vest, you know, every single pocket on here I can get into. Pretty simple. I do have pretty good shoulder mobility. I can get to the side pouches. Anyways, you use the vest enough. It really just functions with your body. But coming back to the shell pouches, having these sit a little bit lower than what you probably see in the bottom of this game game bag, it that lower center of gravity gives a slight advantage to lighter weight objects that are put in there. Because if you look at a teeter-totter right, if it's level playing field and you put something heavy here or you have a heavy kid on a playground, he's gonna put the little kid right in the air. Well, if that little kid for some reason had a, a five foot advantage, if he was sitting in a hole and that big kid climbed on there, that kid has to travel a lot further. There, a lot more has to happen for that whole effect to roll back and for that vest to essentially rock back, right? So because I'm not going to put a ton of weight in here, um, you know, four, four blue grouse or a couple of pheasants or whatever, they're, they're pretty heavy birds, right? So the more that I can put on this waist belt, again, it's going to better counterbalance weight as I'm filling the back of the vest, hopefully throughout a successful day. So that would be the Final Rise Summit in a very long-winded explanation. I really hope I touched on the majority of things that um, answer questions that you have. I'm sure I forgot something. Um, it is important to know, and I'll do another, another video, I guess, on this at another time. These vests do have the ability to carry a dog. Um, this is one continuous piece of webbing that is fed out from the game bag. And as you can see here, this can separate and open at the top. Um, you're able to unlash all of this, wrap the dog up like a taco, reconnect the shoulder harness, and you're good to go. Um, you know, people have suggested that we use buckles or different things like that to make that easier. And really, in, in my mind, I'm worried about bulletproofing or building something that can't fail over something that's just really quick and easy to use. I know I talked about these metal sliders a little bit earlier and how well they bite and how they hold. <clears throat> it makes a huge difference. Ladder locks and buckles, they are plastic, they can break metal is going to do a lot better job and it's not going to slip. Um, so, you know, whether you put a big turkey back here or you put your dog back here, in the case of an emergency, it's gonna give you a better carrying experience. You know, for example, this past year, we were up in Idaho, <clears throat> we were hunting sharp tail and we dropped off this big face and we are gonna kind of hunt the edge of these private CRP fields. We got into the bottom and a good friend's dog had, had an issue. I, I honestly don't know what happened. I mean, it was very early into the hunt. It wasn't warm, she'd been watered. She just shut down, but she happened to shut down in the very bottom of the draw. So me and my friend, Alan, we ended up putting the dog in his vest and took turns hiking her out of there. I mean, it was, it was a big hike, it was very steep. But I mean, we were able to put a 45 pound dog in the vest and haul it out. The vest didn't slip, it didn't move. Everything was locked in place. And in my mind, really that's gonna get you out of the field quicker than just being able to load a dog quickly. Um, so anyways, that's just a story and hopefully provides a little bit of context. But that is a key note to um, keep in mind. Is the vest specifically designed to carry a dog? No, but it does have that feature designed into it. In the case of an emergency, your vest, more than anything, is for your dog, way more than it is for you, right? A lot of the stuff that we're carrying is for the safety of the dogs, the water, first aid kit, different things like that. This is a piece of gear that should be supporting your dog. So being able to carry a dog is a great feature, and in the case of emergency, it's gonna get you out of a pickle. I don't know how many emails we got this past year, people that thanked us for that design concept, um, sent us pictures, and were just very grateful that they didn't have to try to put their dogs on their shoulders, 
They didn't have to leave their gun. They didn't have to leave their other stuff. <clears throat> they were able to load up the dog, pick up their belongings, and make it back to the truck in a timely manner. And at the end of the day, if we were able to help one single dog, I feel like our job's done. So anyways, <laughs> that is the final ride Summit Vest. If you have any questions on it, please reach out. I'm sure that there's something I missed. Um, you can email us, team at finalrise.com. My cell phone number is on the website. And just know that we're here to help you, and we appreciate you considering our product and taking the time to watch this video. So thank you again so much. God bless. Mm-hmm. <clears throat>